There is no better time to be in the woods than in the fall with a bow watching for deer. There's a lot to bow hunting that a lot of hunters enjoy. Next week, we're going to talk about the deer side of it. But this week, we're going to talk about the equipment, how to choose it. We're going to look at targets. We're going to check out some inventions that are amazing or are they amusing? Oh, we have a lot more. So you stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost with ideas on archery for the practical sportsman. Hunting white-tailed deer with a bow and arrow is an ultimate challenge. Now, what makes it so tough is that the hunter has to get close to the deer, very close. A heavy compound bow with a oh, 70 or 80-pound draw weight can reach out 30, 40 yards if the bow hunter is a good shot. But lighter weight bows demand that the hunter be closer, 20 yards or so from the deer. Now, some states and provinces have regulations requiring a minimum 45-pound draw weight. A lot of women, teenagers, and even men who have physical disabilities cannot pull back and shoot a 45-pound bow accurately. But with lighter weight bows at shorter ranges, they can take deer as well as anybody. Should there be a minimum restriction on bow hunters? Well, before you make up your mind, listen to the story of one hunter who gears up with a lightweight bow. Now, a lot of people are going to say, can't be done. <laughs> What was, what was the draw weight on your bow? 28 pounds. Now, haven't people told you that that's not heavy enough to hunt deer with? No, Nobody's because I've that? taken 10, so they kind of believe I can do it now in the family, yeah. 10 deer with a 28 pound mm -hmm. bow? Is and not only that, I've seen two of them fall, you know, hit them hard enough that they fell within range of being able to see them. So. How close do you shoot? About 20 yards, this one was at 20, yeah. So you don't shoot much more, you don't do 30-yard no, shots or anything? No, no. I don't think I'd get enough penetration. I only got about six inches, probably. Hit one long. But that's, that's really Did all you job. need. That's right. He only went about 300 yards, I guess. Huh. That's, I mean, 10 deer in how many years? About 18 bow hunting, but I gun hunt also, and I've taken 10 with a gun. So I've got 20 all total. Are those bucks, does, what's the... Uh, about 14 bucks and some does, but some of the bucks were small ones, you know. Not, <laughs> naturally not like this. But like, what do you call a small one? Well, button bugs, spike horns, a lot of spike horns up okay, in the state well, we're land. On, yeah. We're on the same wavelength then. Yeah, right. I thought maybe you were working down to no. eights and tens. No. You know. Well, that's great. Jeez, I, I, I never dreamed, you know, coming up here that you got this with a 28-pound bow. I would have thought that maybe you'd start cranking the bow up to 35 or... I cranked it up one time a few years ago when I'd been to the gym and worked out, and the first deer that came in on a nice cool morning, I had trouble getting the bow pulled back. I had to do one of these big... Mm. I said, put it back down where I can pull it comfortably and... And shoot accurately. There. Yeah. I'll yeah. be darned. Great story. Let's have a big round of applause for Linda Luna with a 28 pounder, 10th, 10th deer. I'm, I'm impressed. I understand also it's going to be probably the largest deer for a woman bow hunter. The uh, recording period's not over till the end of March, but it may be a new record. Awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> Using a lightweight bow for deer isn't a problem if the hunter restricts shooting to 20 yards or less. There are two reasons. One, the arrow will maintain enough velocity to guarantee sufficient penetration to kill the deer humanely. And two, a reasonably good archer can maintain accuracy within 20 yards. Bows with heavier draw weights are preferred, though, because they shoot arrows faster, and faster arrows don't have the arching trajectory of slower arrows, which makes them easier to shoot accurately. In this quest for speed, bow hunters have done several things. They've gone to arrows that are smaller in diameter and lighter weight. They've gone to compound bow designs that have oblong cams instead of round wheels. Those oblong cams snap the string faster when they're released. And archers have gone to release aids that clip onto the string instead of using their fingers to release the arrow. But what effect do these improvements have on arrow accuracy? The Easton Aluminum Company, which dominates the market with aluminum arrows, produced a video where a variety of bows and arrows and releases were photographed shooting arrows in super slow motion. Let's just look at three of these. First, a bow shot with fingers. In slow motion, you can see the string rolls off the shooter's fingers, so it starts a little off-center. 
halfway out the bow, it's clear off the arrow rest, which bends the arrow sideways. This straightens out after the arrow leaves the bow. The flight stabilizes. But what happens in the split second after the shooter lets the arrow fly looks pretty scary. With that kind of stress on an arrow, you can see why the shooter has to release the arrow consistently every time. Otherwise, accuracy will be inconsistent. Now let's take a look at a cam bow, the fastest type on the market today. We'll solve the sideways motion of the string by using a mechanical release aid. But oblong cams on a compound snap the string so fast at the beginning of the acceleration that the arrow actually bows up vertically. The veins flap like the fins on a fish because the arrow is oscillating up and down. With heavy draw weights and cams, the arrows have to be matched perfectly with the bow, or that fast acceleration will bend an arrow way out of shape in the first few inches of travel, and a mismatched arrow won't shoot accurately. Now the third example, a heavier, larger diameter hunting arrow shot with a release aid. This is close to perfect arrow travel without warping or bending. A wheel bow doesn't have the initial acceleration quite as fast as a cam bow, and the heavier arrow gets a slower launch than the lighter arrow, but it releases clean, holds its shape, and for most shooters, this combination will be more accurate. Now, all three of these can be accurate. The kind of equipment you choose is up to you, as long as it's tuned and balanced and you stick within the limitations of penetration and accuracy, how you gear up is your choice but how you shoot when you're hunting is your responsibility. So choose wisely and shoot responsibly. That's the key to gearing up. How do you build your muscles for archery without pulling your bow? Well, Saunders came up with a perfect solution. It's an exerciser they call the power pull exercising the same muscles you use for archery. The beauty of it is you can develop your bow pulling muscles anytime, anywhere. Saunders is also marketing a device for release shooters who want to practice dry snapping their releases, something you cannot do on a bow without an arrow. Dry snapping will crack the limbs. Again, you can practice with your release anytime, anyplace without arrows. As for practical targets, Ed Urban from Owasso tried stuffing a feed sack full of plastic bags. You know those paper or plastic stuff from the supermarket? He found that the plastic bags have tremendous arrow stopping ability, and recycling these bags takes a little of the guilt out of asking for plastic at the supermarket. Ed got this idea from Tom Phelps from Coldwater, who found a source for scraps of hollow fill. It's an insulation material for sleeping bags and coats. He stuffs hollow fill into burlap bags. Now, we found both targets stop arrows well, and the best thing is that the arrows come out easily. Two fingers does it. No, no, no. Actually, the best thing is you can make these targets yourself, and they cost little or nothing. It can't get any more practical than that. Explain to me this uh, third lens you have in your glasses, Earl. Well, I shoot underneath my glasses. I look very close to my nose, so I use the lens to be able to see my sight pens. You mean, put your, can you just pull up and draw so we, we can look at I it this way? Hands. And use your hands. Okay. So you draw and you're using the peep sight. Okay. Well, that's right. So, oh, I see. That moves your glasses up and you're looking. Is that like a bifocal? Yes. And you look right down through the sight pen. Yep. Interesting. Okay. Where'd you get that? I made it. <laughs> you did? Yes. What kind of material is the lens? It's a plastic safety glass type of material. Huh. Normal manufacturer of eyeglasses. No, when you're shooting, what does the target look like? Perfectly good. It does? Yes. Yes, target's fine. And so is the sight, the whole... Thing I can right see here? this. See, my glasses, my prescription is I can see about this far, and then from that point on, I can't see for the next foot or so real clear. Hmm. That's where my sight pen is, so I use this third lens to be able to see my sight pen, and it's clear at a distance. Do you use this for hunting? Mm, this is, I just made it this summer. What do you think? You can use it for hunting? Yes. <laughs> okay, well, good. Be interesting to see how you do. Yeah, better than last year, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Bow hunters have always had the problem of where to put their bows while they're waiting for deer, which can be hours. Sport Shield Manufacturing developed a unique bow holder they call the Rest. It straps around your leg, the bottom wheel of your compound rests in the pouch. 
the top is held by a hook. Leaves your hands free, but the bow is ready. What do you think for $18? Amazing or amusing? Another problem archers have is keeping the arrow on the arrow rest. Tip your bow and the arrow falls off, which can scare a deer and blow your chances. To solve this, the stay put arrow holder was developed, a small piece of soft silicone material that holds the arrow in place, but when you shoot it, it flies out of the way. No effect on the arrow flight. At $14, what do you think? Amazing or amusing? And here's a wild product marketed by Scott Yarborough of Sky Manufacturing. This is the new Ultra Loader 2000, which is an automatic arrow loader, which allows you to shoot two arrows in as little time as about three seconds. When you shoot the first arrow, the energy stored in the limbs triggers this latch mechanism, which allows the second over arrow to flip over onto your rest right in front of your string. At that point, all you have to do is to push the string into the knock, it'll hold it there, and then as you draw back with, with either fingers or release, you, the clamp opens up out of the way and you're ready to shoot instantaneously. How long does it take to get off two shots? Knock, draw, shoot. That took exactly three seconds. You let go. The spring is released that turns the second arrow over directly in line with the string. You push the string into the knock. The arrow holder flips out of the way when you draw. There's no way your eye can catch what's happening at regular speed, but when we slow it down, you can see. The hinged mechanism is simple enough so that it works flawlessly. All you do is engage the string onto the knock and pull back. Your second arrow is ready. It's an intriguing concept, but at $69, will most archers find the Ultra Loader amazing or amusing? Well, I'll tell you, I got there at 7 o'clock, it was still dark, and I thought, well, I'm going to try this grunting. I never really grunted much, but I had, had deer come up early thinking I'm another deer, so I grunted. He grunted back. Now, this is using a grunt call. Correct. He grunted back. I heard about three or four grunts, and then it was quiet. Well, it was still dark. I couldn't see anything, so I just stayed put. Well, it's a long story. Two hours and 45 minutes, I talked to this buck. How often would, would you grunt and he would grunt back? Well, at about, as near as I can figure, at 20 after, I fell asleep. See, I'd been hunting a long time. I hadn't seen many deer, and I figured this one here was going to be gone, too, so mm -hmm. I just let him go. And uh, 8 o'clock, I woke up, grunted. He grunted back, and then he came out towards me. Uh, maybe 8.20, I grunted again, got a response. He'd come out within about 35 yards, and then he'd, he'd go back to his lair or wherever. I, uh, I saw him at least four times in two hours and 45 minutes. Every time he'd come up within 35 yards of me. I also saw a few other small bucks that came in at the same time. It was just incredible. And you feel the grunting was what was oh, causing this? Absolutely. I've never grunted, you know, had any success. But this is absolutely the proof positive. Mm -hmm. It was great. So at, at, make a long story short, two hours and 45 minutes later, he came out where you could see him? Well, I'm peering around this big hemlock tree trying to watch this thing, and he comes towards me immediately, okay? I'm peering around this hemlock tree. He's coming closer, he's coming closer, and I'm going further and further around the hemlock tree because he's coming around the right side of the tree. Okay. You weren't in a tree stand? Yeah. Oh, okay. Around the tree. But I'm trying to... Oh, I see. One of these numbers. Mm -hmm. And my eyes are going bonkers because I don't want to, you know, I want to keep my eyes on them. Finally, I got to the point where I had to just get in position, and I turned to my right. I figured, well, I'm going to get ready for my shot. I waited and waited and waited. See, he crossed my trail and he must have stopped for a couple seconds, a couple minutes. Five minutes later, I looked down about 10 feet away. He's standing there to my right. Well, I'm a right-handed shooter, hopeless, okay? I waited, he walked across my trail. He walked right in front of me. He stopped at his scrape 17 yards away, quartering away from me. 
Absolutely perfect shot. And you made a perfect shot. And I made a perfect shot. Two questions come to mind. You were in a tree stand. Yeah. You slept for a half hour or so. Yeah. Do you want to explain that? How do you sleep in it? Were you strapped in tightly or what? Well, it had a lot of branches underneath me. It was a big hemlock. Okay, well, that I, I've done that before myself, just people asking. It wasn't me. planned. It just happened. You know what I mean? You didn't mean to fall asleep. I didn't mean to fall asleep. Okay, secondly, do you think your snoring while you were sleeping kept that deer coming in? <laughs> Good point. Good point. You could have been. Yeah. The number one precaution every bow hunter needs to take while he's hunting from a tree stand is to have a safety belt. Now, this is a real simple belt that goes around the tree, loops through and around my waist, and this prevents you not from stepping out of the tree stand because you could still do it, but if you fall, it's gonna catch you. It might not be the most comfortable in the world, but it's the safest. Uh, there's two times when you could fall out. One time is if you happen to be sleeping, which you don't have to intend to do. The other time is if you get excited and you're looking around for a deer, you can slip because you're not watching your footing. But this safety belt is the thing to have if you're gonna hunt from a tree stand, keep it on at all times because it's better to be safe than sorry. Now they look like venison meatballs, but they're called bow camp bites. This was sent to us by Lydia Shank from Indian River. In fact, I'm gonna take one of these over here and do a little, uh, <laughs> I don't know why autopsy is in my mind here. <laughs> I'm gonna check out what's in here. And I can't see much. There is a venison burger. Help me out here. Lydia, onions, what's in here? Onions. Salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. Worcestershire sauce. Egg. Eggs, breadcrumbs, the usual meatball stuff. A chili sauce. That's the As opposed key. to ketchup. Well, that's key? the next thing is the key, grape jelly. Grape jelly. Yeah. That's what makes them taste no different. No kidding. Well, you can't see any of these ingredients in here, the grape jelly. I Make sure you get some sauce. Some sauce? Yeah. Okay. I'll that's try that. That's the best that. part. I don't know if I can taste the grape jelly or not. Well, I have I hope grape not. jelly on my mind. <laughs> no, you can't. Hmm. Nobody can tell really that that's what's in it. They're very surprised. But it gives it. It sure makes it give a a, a distinct or a, a certain taste to the it sauce. Does. So, I mean, it's different than regular. Do you want some, Steve? Oh, sure. Well, By the way, this is Steve Shank, who seems to have a lot to say about these. I love them. They go nuts bites. for them. They last about an hour when she gets done. Hmm. If they make it. Uh, so when they get done. Now, I gotta tell you, Lydia, you have to have some of the sauce with this. Right. That's what she told me. <laughs> that the sauce is really uh, That's the key, the otherwise really key. it's just a meatball. Yeah. No, I don't think it is just a meatball. No? Well, I, I cut my venison real lean. I don't like mm -hmm. any fat in my, in my um, venison. And mm. it really seems to help the flavor of the venison. Grape jelly is the key that, if you tell someone beforehand, they'll say, ew, grape mm -hmm. jelly, you know, like they don't want to try it. So we usually don't tell them until they eat about 10 of them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can believe it. These are absolutely outstanding. You call them bow camp bites, so you must take them up to bow camp in the fall. Or mm -hmm. Make them for Dear Eve. Dear Eve. We have Dear Eve, yes. Well, very good. The greatest thing for Dear Eve, Lydia Schenk's recipe, bow camp bites. Mm. Practical Sportsman magazine is a companion to the TV show. It contains information about subjects you see each week. Well, that wraps up our overview of bow hunting from the archery end. Now there's lots of different bows and arrows and accessories that we didn't cover. We'll have that in future shows. But next week, we're gonna talk about the deer side of deer hunting, their habits, products to attract them, a lot of aspects of the white-tailed deer itself. But remember, the best thing about bow hunting of all is getting outdoors in the fall. It's a great place to be. See you next week. I got up there late and uh, I didn't want to put my tree stand up and make the noise. So I put my tree stand on the ground and sat on my tree stand. Well, before th I did that, I hung my ammonia bottle out in the tree. Uh, and it seems to always work for me. So uh, uh, I was sitting on my tree stand and in come a four point. I said, man, this is great. And uh, all of a sudden he stopped and uh, turned around, walked out, and I couldn't figure out why. Well, 20 yards behind me, the big boy was standing.
Hmm. And uh, he just uh, he come up alongside me 10 yards away, and uh, I just drilled him. Well, tell me about this ammonia bottle. What, well, what I've seen it on your show a couple years ago, and uh, I was hunting over his scrape, and i seen it on your show, so I tried it a couple years ago, and it works. Um, well, so what do you do? Do you poke a hole in the I bottle? I poke and a let hole it in the bottom and unscrew the cap and let it drip. And uh, anybody that says it doesn't work uh, hasn't oh. tried it. Okay, but it does work because I've had bucks run by and stop dead in their tracks and come right back to it. Huh. And here's proof of the pudding right here. Scott Preston's 12 point with an 18 and 3 quarter inch spread. Congratulations on that, Scott. Good story. I'm glad that that uh, works for you.